Section 2.4, no, problem number 39, gives us the equation for the famous bell curve, uh, which is given right here, where uh, sigma is the standard deviation and mu is the mean of the distribution. Uh, first part of the problem asks us to calculate um, what the first derivative, and then also to find or to uh, verify that x equals mu is a critical point. So start out. For f prime of x, well, uh, 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi is just a constant, so we can pull it out. And the next part uh, will just be the derivative of e to the minus quantity x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared, which looks a little complicated, but it's really just going to be a simple chain rule. So first start with uh, e evaluate it at um, the inside, uh, at the inside evaluated at x. So x minus mu squared, or it should be a negative uh, quantity x minus mu, mu quantity squared over 2 sigma squared. And now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside here. So, derivative of the inside, we just pull out uh, minus 1 over 2 sigma squared. And now we need to uh, multiply by the derivative of uh, x minus mu quantity squared, which, again, if we apply the chain rule here, we can apply the power rule, multiply by 2. And then, multi and then x minus mu. Uh, so 2 times x minus mu. And then the derivative of x minus mu is just 1. So we're done there. So let's simplify this. We have 1 over sigma square root 2 pi. Uh, e, well, actually, to simplify this even more, we can just notice that this part right here is just f of x. So this whole thing is going to be equal to f of x uh, times minus, twos will cancel out here, so minus f of x times x minus mu over sigma squared. Now a critical point is a value of x such that this expression is equal to zero, the first derivative is equal to zero. So we see that um, f prime of mu would be minus f of mu. Here we'll just have mu minus mu. That's over sigma squared, but it doesn't really matter because here we have 0. So we can see that x equals mu is indeed a critical point of f. Now, part b asks us to find the second derivative of f. So first off, let's write down what the first derivative was. So f prime of x uh, is minus f of x times x minus mu over sigma squared. All right, so second derivative will equal minus 1 over sigma squared pull out that constant, and now we have a product rule, uh, product rule problem. So we have the derivative of f of x times x minus mu, uh, and then plus f of x times the derivative of x minus mu, which is just 1. Right. So now let's we want to write this all in terms of f of x, actually. So let's um, figure out when, uh, or let's rewrite f prime of x in terms of f of x. Here we have minus 1 over sigma squared. Now we'll just substitute in for f prime of x. So we have minus. 
f of x times x minus mu over sigma squared. Now we're going to be multiplying that by x minus mu, so so to be x minus mu squared plus f of x. Right, so let's simplify this a little bit more, and we get multiply through. So that will give us f of x times x minus mu squared over sigma to the fourth, and then minus f of x over sigma squared, which probably the easier way to write this is f of x sigma squared over sigma to the fourth. And one last simplification here. Let's factor out the f of x. That leaves us with x minus mu quantity squared uh, minus sigma squared all over sigma to the fourth. So this is probably the simplest expression for the second derivative of f. Now, part C asks us if f of x has any inflection points. Now, an inflection point is going to be a point where the sign of the second derivative changes. So, um, we need to check here and see, uh, is there uh, a point at which this equals zero? So, if this equals zero, then we must have that x minus mu squared uh, minus sigma squared is equal to zero, which implies that x minus mu quantity squared is equal to sigma squared. Now the possible values uh, for this are uh, either, you know, if we take the square root both sides here, we see that x minus mu has to equal plus or minus uh, plus or minus sigma. So we have that x minus mu quantity squared is equal to sigma squared. That means that x minus mu is either equal to plus or minus sigma. Which then implies that x is equal to mu plus or minus sigma. So we have two values, uh, two possible values for inflection points of the graph of f of x.